morning students good morning sir good morning sir so able to see my screen good morning sir yes, yes sir yes sir great so yes, let us start this this is the first technology session i am taking for your class this year where we are going to talk about artificial intelligence i would request everybody to make sure that you ask your questions in the chat window just write down wherever you feel like asking a question and i would be able to answer that as soon as i get the first opportunity to answer it so let us start during this particular session what we are going to talk about four quadrants what is ai why ai where ai and how ai so that that is how we are going to structure this particular discussion this is very very open discussion all together and i would request you to explore various things whatsoever we talk during the session and try to align your thought process to understand this technology this is a very very basic session all together and what we are going to do is to make you feel comfortable when you start learning artificial intelligence so that is the intention of this session okay so first thing first let me talk about certain hierarchical advancements in data analytics when we talk about hierarchical advances so first thing first comes to our mind is business intelligence when we talk about business intelligence it is primarily structured to handle few questions and these questions are what happened when did it happen who made it happen how many things were involved in that particular thing so that is what is being answered when we talk about business intelligence you might have heard of the term bi business intelligence so what when who and how so that is what it is being answered when it talks about about business intelligence next thing comes business analytics a step further when you talk about a step further it tries to answer few questions more than what when who and how, how many these questions are why did it happen will it happen again what will happen if we change certain things what else does this particular data tell us that never thought to ask so these are few things which are covered under business analytics so slowly and slowly we are trying to work out moving from business intelligence to business analytics these are few things you will hear you will read whenever you are discussing data with other people okay. the context is data only so when we talk about data context next thing comes in the series is machine learning so first we talked about business intelligence then we talked about business analytics so that is how the technology advancements have happened and then when we move to the third block it is machine learning three important things are there when we talk about machine learning descriptive analysis predictive analysis and prescriptive analysis that is how we need to understand how machine learning works when we talk about machine learning so first thing first it talks about descriptive which generally covers bi questions business intelligence questions what happened when happened who have who did this how many things are done and all that so it gives 
a historical past event analysis when we talk about descriptive analysis so you do have history data and you are analyzing that data and trying to find some information knowledge out of it then comes predictive predictive is okay i do have an algorithm or i do have certain things mentioned which can help me predict something aaj barish hogi something like that or today it will be a very hot day altogether that is where prediction will come into picture we'll try to understand how it it is being done but first of all let us try to understand what is it and then third thing comes prescriptive analysis which is very very critical okay you might have heard doctor giving you prescription it is it is similar to that it is similar to that primarily talking about one aspect that yes keeping certain things of past into consideration i can prescribe you that if you do this this will not happen or if you do this this will happen that is what prescription is all about next block in the series is artificial intelligence which gives a very very weird answer when machine tells us who humans i am the new human that is that is a major tangential shift in the whole hierarchical advancements of the technology that is what we are going to talk about today when machines are super intelligent super fast and are competing with humans so when you talk about how data analytics has moved as far as technology as advancements are concerned so first bi then ba then machine learning then artificial intelligence that is how hierarchical advancements have happened and that is how you will also implement various things when it comes to data analysis so what is ai so our focus discussion today will be circumference towards ai a very very basic and simple definition in the words of dr vishal sikka who was my ex boss at infosys and according to him that is how they have defined artificial intelligence it is a science of making computers do things that would be considered intelligent if done by humans a very very simple definition of artificial intelligence you may not find it on google because th this is one particular definition which tells us that yes we need to make a machine who can do things what we think if humans do and those things are considered to be intelligent so th this is this is how the definition of ai is all about you will find n numbers of definitions on internet you you can, i i would request you to just browse through those uh, definitions because it is it is very very important for us to understand this because these are very very big buzzwords nowadays everybody is talking about but most of the people are not familiar with this so let me give you one step forward on your screen you might have observed that th that is how we reply to our emails in the in the present scenario 
ईमेल हम रिसीव करते हैं देन वी रीड द टेक्स्ट देन वी ओपन द अटैचमेंट इफ देर इज एनी एंड एंड दैट इज हाउ दैट इज हाउ यू सेव द अटैचमेंट इन द लोकल मेमोरी एंड देन यू थिंक ऑफ रिप्लाइंग इट एंड slowly and slowly you move forward if if that particular thing requires some appointment setting and all that you can do that and when you are replying it you are attaching some documents you are proofreading the mail you send the mail and you send your o o o reply also o o is out of office generally this happens when whenever you you will be joining a company in near future maybe in a year or two then when you are out of office you need to tell your professional customers that yes i am not there in the office and your replies will be delayed that is how oo works and that is how that is how you reply to various emails but scenario is going to change see the difference your machine will receive an email for you your machine <coughs> will get back to the email your machine will open the attachments read the content your machine will save that particular thing your machine will tell you the context of that email and it is it is very very important for us to understand that slowly and slowly machine will check my calendar machine will attach the document proof reads it and sign gets a sign off from me machine will tell me that okay i have drafted a mail for you would you like to send it across because final authority lies with human being at this moment of time and machine will send it across that is how smart emailing works just just try to observe the technological change machines are slowly trying to replace human beings in various activities this is how you book a cab you book a cab you finalize the start and destination point search for the cab provider whether it is ola or uber or some local cab agency check the availability check the money and then book that particular cab and then your money is deducted from the uh, wallet and transaction is completed that is how you generally do but how smart cab booking is done you just need to tell alexa book a cab for me this is the start point this is the destination point and rest of the activities alexa will do how beautiful it will be it is it is just serving as my assistant and everything is done automatically a great help to me that is how you take care of your health when you talk about your health you don't see your doctor until you are ill when you are ill you search for a good doctor check check with your relatives internet or past knowledge or to find a doctor you consult one doctor and then second opinion third opinion and all that then finally you get the treatment and you go ahead that is how you take care of your health but situation is going to change machine will check your vital health points on a regular basis machine will provide you an alert that okay there is a possibility that you will fall ill because your body vital parameters are going to be fluctuated 
In that particular scenario, machine will check online to find a doctor based upon the feedbacks available on internet and machine fix an appointment, block your calendar, book your cab on the day of checkup and finally you get the treatment. Just observe the whole process. That is how, that is how we are going to insert machines into our daily routine and slowly and slowly they are barging into. When you talk about your financials, that is how you do that. You need to manage your money. You need to wisely invest in stock and shares. You carefully check those details yourself. If you are not very much familiar, you hire a financial advisor or a planner. He will give you advice on your wealth or portfolio management. Various financial decisions are taken under his guidance and you move forward as far as your financials are concerned. This is what it is done in the current scenario. But when it is smart financial advisor, everything is being done by machine. You hire a machine that is financial advisor or planner. Machine guides you. Machine takes care of your wealth management portfolio. And machine takes care of various financial decisions based upon a very, very strong analytics. It is, it is basically called a robo-advisor. So that is, that is how things are slowly moving. Smart home refrigerator, you might have heard of, you might have seen in various clips and all that on internet that yes, you have an IoT equipped refrigerator. You want your food and grocery items to be ordered automatically. Now eggs are not there or vegetables are not there. Milk is not there. Butter is not there. Bread is not there. So that particular device will check automatically and order that particular thing online and manage your home needs. That is how your smart home refrigerator works. But now, one step ahead, how to embed smartness? So this, this was the case. Now, there's a smart analytics. See the difference on three blocks. That smart analytics is checking your health stats, available products, prescribed level of intakes by your doctor. So all factors are integrated into your smart home refrigerator. So this is, this is one step ahead. And that smart analysis will be fed into your IoT device. And based upon that, your home needs are being managed. So slowly and slowly, these technologies are peeping into our daily routine. That is how we call it machine-enabled human being. That is what AI is all about. When we talk about AI, it is, it is primarily a product class of four blocks. First block is knowledge representation because three, four examples we have seen and what we have seen is each and every factor, each and every attribute, each and every point is being represented so that machine can understand that. So I need to represent my knowledge. That is where to store information provided before or during the interrogation. So this is the first block of AI. Whenever you are trying to implement one AI engine, you need to ensure how you are going to represent the knowledge. On that particular knowledge, you need to set one automated engine, which will help you to reason it out. Reasoning means question answers in various scenarios and then draw new conclusions. That, that is where next block will come into picture. So you have represented the knowledge. You, you do have one automated engine set up, which, which will help you to reason it out, to draw conclusions. 
Third will be, we talked about Alexa a few minutes back. So I need someone, some machine who can understand my language. Who can understand my language and convert that particular language into action items. That is where natural language processing will be very, very critical for the whole, whole success of artificial intelligence because humans are interacting with machines. And then definitely, yes, I need to understand certain algorithms, certain new technologies to detect and to extrapolate the patterns coming out from the knowledge and the automated reasoning and converting NLP, natural language processing, into action items. So these four blocks, whenever you are talking about artificial intelligence, you need to focus around these four blocks. Very, very critical to understand. Slowly and slowly, we are moving towards the technicalities of the technology. And we are trying to understand, we are trying to explore how I can implement artificial intelligence in my daily routine. Let me very quickly give you some examples, some AI equipped products around us. This is what we have heard of, driverless cars. I would request you to sit down for half an hour after this session and try to see if you as AI engineer needs to design this driverless car, how you will do that? What are the things you need to take care? So I would request you to prepare one template that yes, uh, I need to automate this, I need to automate this, I need to automate this, one, two, three, four. When you are done with that particular thing, that will be the starting point of designing a driverless car. It will, after that half an hour, you will understand and you will appreciate how difficult it will be to manage a driverless car. It, it is not a joke altogether. Very, very critical, very, very complex design altogether. So when, when we talk about self-driving cars, it takes care of four questions. So all design part will revolve around those four questions. Where I am, what's around me, what will happen next? And what should I do in that particular scenario? So when I am talking about that particular scenario to design a driverless car, you need to take care of these things. And when we talk about driverless cars, we need to understand where we are standing as far as artificial intelligence is concerned. So there are three major categories. Artificial narrow intelligence, artificial general intelligence, and artificial super intelligence. Slowly and slowly, I, I would request you to just understand the story, what I'm trying to weave around the whole topic. Because we talked about business intelligence, business analytics, machine learning, and then AI. We, then we talked about what is AI, what are the four building blocks of AI. If I need to implement artificial intelligence, I need to make sure that knowledge is represented. I do have a logical reasoning. I do have natural language processing and I do have algorithms available from machine learning. And then the, these, are, these are a few building blocks. But when, when we talk about three critical categories, so narrow, narrow, journal, and super. These three things are very, very critical to understand. When we talk about narrow intelligence, narrow intelligence is, okay, I do have Alexa available. I do have one chess player available, compute, driven by a machine who can defeat my world grand chess master. I do have one system available, artificial intelligence system available, which can help me do my cab booking, reply to my email, and then manage my finances. But next question arises, one word is written, 
sometimes referred to as weak AI. Why? Because, because whatsoever examples we are talking about, let us say you have designed one AI system to manage your emails. Can that system be implemented to manage your finances? Answer is no. That will be a different system altogether. That is where narrow word comes. It is a narrow intelligent system altogether. It, it is primarily designed to work on a single problem, not general problems, not multiple problems. That is where artificial narrow intelligence is a weak AI. And this is a starting point. That is a starting point. Next comes general intelligence. General intelligence is, see, it is referred to as strong AI. And when we talk about general intelligence, means machines are just smart as human beings. And machines can form any intellectual task that a human being can do. This is, this is what general intelligence is all about. One major point at this moment of time, where we are standing currently, general intelligence is not in near future. We are, we are just weaving various blocks of narrow intelligence. General intelligence is yet a far off concept altogether. We are yet to do it because it will require a lot of things to be implemented when machines will start acting like human beings, like we, we are interacting. Immediately, immediately, somebody comes to my cabin, I'll just keep you on mute, talk with him. And then if he says that, okay, you need to do this particular thing. So I, I'm, I'm flexible in doing so many things as human beings. But the example would we, we have taken, artificial narrow intelligence, they are meant to do a single thing altogether. And from narrow intelligence, we need to move to the next step of general intelligence, which is, which is far off at this moment of time. But definitely, it will. people are working, researchers are working, and you will be the people who will be coming out with various general intelligence concepts, various general intelligence systems. And third is super intelligence, artificial super intelligence. It is primarily smarter than human beings. When we talk about smarter than human beings, we do have best human brains available in each and every field, like Einstein is there, like Superman is there, like Iron Man is there, all those things. They are, they are, they are scientifically created with general wisdom and a lot of social skills altogether. When we do have machines available who are smarter than those best of the human brains, it is called super intelligence, a artificial super intelligence. It, it, it will be smarter than any human being around us. And that will be, that will be the next level of our world evolution altogether. That is what it is talking about. Third bullet, ASI is the reason the topic of AI is such a spicy meatball and why the words immortality and extinction will both appear in those posts multiple times. So currently, if you talk about, we are in the age of artificial narrow intelligence. We need to move to general intelligence and then need to move to super intelligence. So that is how it's all about. So current state. We do have connected cars. We do have our phones. We do have various tools available who, who can judge our emails. We do have a powerful Amazon or Flipkart available where you see a lot of things happening on the page, recommended for you, feedback for you, add as a friend on Facebook and all that. So those are the things which are primarily coming under the category of narrow intelligence. More examples. 
Google Translator, Alexa. We do have various sophisticated tools available like IBM Watson. I would request you after the session, there, there are many APIs available on IBM Watson, which you can just import and do very, very beautiful things altogether when it comes to implementing narrow intelligence systems. So that is how various examples are there. And when we talk about various examples, it, it is at most important for us to understand where we are sitting. You do have a lot of applications in your mobile phone, but those mobile applications are for specific purpose. You cannot use one application for the other purpose. That is where the Im importance of moving from narrow intelligence to general intelligence is very, very important. Very, very important for us. So critical aspect, three categories we need to understand. Okay, so when we talk about narrow intelligence, when we talk about narrow intelligence, it, it is primarily various things. Few days back, if you are following the technology very closely, few cars of Tesla were hacked and, and it was, it was very, very difficult for Tesla people to contain those cars afterwards. I would request you to go through the internet news and you will get to know that how dangerous it is to move in the artificial intelligence world at this moment of time. Because, because when these things happen, Good people are also there, bad people are also there. So we will talk about good and bad side of artificial intelligence also. So when we talk about road from narrow intelligence to general intelligence. So you have seen one picture on your screen. This is a rectangle two shaded maze. Humans can perceive it. This is another picture. You as human being, you are able to differentiate the first figure from the second figure. First is a rectangular two shaded male, maze, but third, second figure is a combination of various phase. In that particular scenario, there is a cylinder, there is a slate, there is a 3D corners and all that. That is how you as human being can perceive various things. But computer will fail miserably. Now third picture. You as human being will immediately say that this is a rock, 3D rock. But computer will say that this is a black and white and gray collage. Computer is not so familiar, so intelligent to tell us that this is rock. So it is, it is very, very critical for us to understand if we want to move from narrow intelligence to general intelligence, we need to make sure that we design computer systems who can, who can do these things. So how to bridge the gap? Few things. machine. We need to make sure that human level intelligence is embedded into that. This, this is one exponential growth of computing. On your horizontal axis, these are the years. And your vertical axis is primarily calculations per second. 
and on your right hand side various entities are there you do have an insect you do have a mouse you do have human you have all human brains so that is that is how that particular exponential growth of computing is happening see the right hand side of x axis 2020 2040 2060 2080 so when it it will be 2060 and 2080 you will be at the fag end of your life around 80 years old around 90 years old and all that so at that moment of time you will see that we will be slowly moving from 10 raised to power minus 10 to 10 raised to power 25 calculations per second it is very very important for us to understand second is when we want to move from narrow intelligence to general intelligence we need to make a copy of our brain we need to evolve that particular brain and make sure that the whole computer understands that that is how that is how it is very very difficult complex problem at this moment of time and when we talk about road from general intelligence to super intelligent it it is it will be the next world altogether you and i maybe misfit into that maybe because that will be filled with machines who are super intelligent more than intelligent than humans and humans will be governed by that that will be super intelligence but whether we will be able to achieve it or not that is one question we need to answer at this moment of time it, it is it is not in the sight but yes when we talk about general intelligence versus humans we do have hardware and software comparisons when we talk about human beings human brains neurons work at 200 hertz but computer works on 2 gigahertz 10 million times faster when we talk about size and store of the memory computer has now petabytes and terabytes of memory but yes humans have limited brain power and when we talk about reliability and durability computer is more precise when when you are you are running a computer you can expect that it it will do the needful but when human beings after a while feel sleepy feel fatigued likely to deteriorate over a period of time that is where machines are going to score over human beings and when we talk about software we when we talk about human software it is our brain only but yes computer has so many other options available so I, I, I am trying to give you both sides of the table so that you understand where we stand currently and where as computer science engineers, as AI engineers, you need to proceed. So first it will be general intelligence, then it will be super intelligence. It will be much faster, much quicker, more intelligent, no comparison and humans will be at the back end. So when we talk about intelligence staircase, that is how you can see that at the bottom it is insect, then it is hen, then it is chimpanzee, then it is human being. That is how things are moving as far as intelligence staircase is concerned. Now see the difference. This particular thing, biological range is at the bottom and super intelligence is at the top. See the difference. See the difference. That is how, that is how you as EA engineers need to be very, very quick in designing and devising a lot of new things when it comes to general intelligence, when it comes to super intelligence. If you, if you see the history of artificial intelligence, it's not a new concept altogether. It, it was it was launched 
in 1950s, 1960s and all that. So around 80 years, 60 years back, why it is re-emerging now? We need to answer this also. Because few things. We do have huge computing power available. We do have a lot of memory space available. We do have a lot of raw data available. And each and everything can be governed, can be driven by a lot of high-tech algorithms. That is where, that is where we need to understand that now AI is becoming a reality. That is why a lot of people around us in this world are talking about AI, working on AI to make things more generic, make things more smarter, make things more intelligent. And a lot of algorithms are also there. So this is a small introduction of different categories of AI. Now, let me, let me very quickly talk about the difference between machine and a human. When we talk about human, are we at stake? This, this is one question we need to answer because a lot of things are happening around us. We are, we are going to compete with machines in coming days. And when we talk about human intelligence, so there are four Qs. One is IQ, one is EQ, one is AQ, one is MQ. When we talk about IQ, it is intelligence quotient. We all know. EQ is emotional quotient. We all know, right? AQ is adversity quotient. Whenever we are in a problem, how human beings work. And MQ is moral quotient. Because we do have moral values available and Apart from intelligence and emotional and adversity quotient, we do have moral quotient also. That is how human beings are devised. That is how human beings are evolved over a period of time. And when we talk about artificial intelligence, if we can embed those four cues into a machine, that is where intelligence will come artificially in a given machine. That is what AI is all about. The capability of a machine to imitate intelligent human behavior. And when we talk about those four cues, it, it is very, very important for us to understand the difference. Recently, a beauty contest was judged by human, uh, by robots instead of human beings. See the difference. So you visit beauty.ai and you will get the information of the first international beauty contest judged by robots. See where we are heading towards. Just we talked about one example that yes, machines are just defeating human beings like anything. Machines are barging into our agriculture, Machines are barging into our robotic surgeries. If, if you hear your relatives or somebody else or medical news that yes, robots are doing the surgeries. So AI is everywhere. Find out where my car is parked. I, I've seen one bag in a magazine. Can you find out where I can get that particular bag? Which movie should I watch next? So we are slowly and slowly getting dependent on machines. This is what we talked about a few minutes back because service industry will be affected by AI. Manufacturing. Manufacturing is all automation at this moment of time. When we talk about manufacturing, it, it is most severely affected industry post AI because humans will be wiped out from the factories. When we talk about assembling, particularly electrical or mechanical industry, robots are going to make inroads. Power distribution will be ruled by artificial intelligence. 
automation industry ai will be at the center stage testing quality assurance manual things are gone it will be all machine driven so this this is what augmented reality will be all about when it comes to shopping online why i am giving you these examples because i would like you to explore various use cases that yes this can be automated using machine this can be influenced by machines that is where your skill set will come very very handy which you will you are going to learn in next couple of years at chitkara university that yes you will be a budding artificial intelligence engineer in total so these are few fields where you need to decide which particular field you are going to work on whether it is agriculture or healthcare or manufacturing or automotive social media financial services you name a field and artificial intelligence has an application in it that is where you guys have a very very bright future if you take up this particular technology in total as far as your professional growth is concerned because whether you like motors whether you like healthcare whether you like manufacturing whether automotive social media financial services anything and everything it will be driven and governed by machines so this is one question slowly and slowly you start exploring will it ever replace human st stupidity humans have these characteristics you will be agreeing to this particular point that we have bravery compassion enthusiasm friendliness generosity gratitude happiness justice optimism patience sacredness spirituality tranquility but machines have only zero one that is the difference that is where that is where we should not be afraid of machines but we should design machines such that they are helpful to human beings so there are a few myths when we talk about artificial intelligence when we talk about myths myths means बहुत सारे लोग कहते हैं कि ये ऐसा हो जाएगा कि ए का मतलब ओनली रोबोज है और ए का जब हम बात करते हैं वेन एवर वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ए आई इट इज ऑल अबाउट रोबोज हु कैन एक्ट ह्यूम आंसर इज नो बट द फैक्ट इज इफ ए रोबो इज ए बॉडी ए आई इज द ब्रेन दिस इज वट यू शुड अंडरस्टैंड वेरी क्लिक बिकॉज बिकॉज इट इट इज एटमोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस to acknowledge that yes it is not a replacement of human beings it is just a supplement and complement so robots are machines that can carry out an action without human help but but is an underline only after they have been programmed by a human so this is this is <coughs> very important for us to understand that yes they are they are replacing various jobs but they are to be programmed by humans only so myth number 2 ai doesn't need humans ai can exist and run all of its own this this is another myth people people say that when machines are there humans are not required but the fact is ai is just like a toddler wanting to be an einstein so it it will take some time in our lifetimes in your lifetimes it may not happen but yes slowly and slowly will move from narrow intelligence to general intelligence to super intelligence how quickly it will move at this moment of time there are various concepts various thoughts but nothing is concrete so ai must seek human guidance because critical decisions require human judgment 
moral and intuition, AI doesn't have that capability to do that. Next myth. When we talk about artificial intelligence, a lot of people are saying that AI will take all jobs and AI will replace all human beings in the workforce and will kill economies. This is not true. The fact is AI is meant to work with humans and not instead of humans. This particular line we should understand very quickly so that we make a clear state of understanding that yes, AI is at our disposal. AI is not going to replace it. And man and machines are good at fundamentally different things. When we talk about people, they can have they can handle complicated situations very quickly. But you throw them one petabyte of data, one terabyte of data, humans may not be able to make good sense out of it. But computers can. So that is where computers have excellent data processing powers, storage, memory, storage spaces. So AI is meant to work with humans and not instead of humans. So this is, this is very, very critical for us to understand. So what can we expect? So what can we expect? Certain jobs will transform. New roles unknown today will be created. Humans will reconnect with creativity. So one very, very plain advice for all of you. If you very quickly realign your skill set according to the industry requirements, then you'll be able to survive. And that is, that is the beauty of Chitkara ecosystem, where we'll make sure that you are addressed with latest technologies, relevant technologies, as far as industry requirements are concerned. And whenever you'll be graduating out, you will be industry ready. That, that, is where, that is where our course curriculum will ensure. It will be dynamic because we'll teach you those things which are industry relevant. And that is, that is the beauty of doing your BE in CSE from Chitkara University. See the picture. Upper side of the picture shows 2009, and there is a helicopter, there's a person taking the video shots, but 10 years down the line, these two people have been replaced by a drone. So that is what I'm talking about. Upgrade yourself on a regular basis. This is very, very critical for us because if we don't do that, just like a cameraman or a helicopter pilot, both will lose their jobs. That is where, but, but the important part is, important part is there is a person who is designing drone. There's a person who is managing drone. So jobs are realigned in those 10 years from 2009 to 2019. That, that is very, very important for us to understand that yes, critically, we need to learn, unlearn, and relearn. Next myth. A is only for the big guys. Only for the big companies. As individual, I may not be able to make maximum out of it. So there's a myth. We are using it every day and pro probably do not realize it. That this is very, very critical for us to understand that yes, slowly and slowly, we are, we are trying to make things very, very easy for us as far as humans are concerned. So product recommendations are there, transactional histories are there, Facebook is recommending, Amazon is doing a lot of things altogether, automating the things. So at this moment of time, whatsoever is happening around us, 
with the title artificial intelligence it is primarily focused towards narrow narrow intelligence next myth if you embrace ai it will fix all my business issues either you accept ai or you are a dead meat this this is another myth ai is not going to solve all my business problems ai still needs my inputs ai still needs my acumen it will still needs my creativity that is what implementation of ai is all about so ai still needs training it still requires humans in the loop it cannot learn completely on its own that is where that is where it is very very important to say this 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 is the crux of my business presentation ai is a part of your plan not your entire plan that this is this is very very important for us to understand that yes if we make ai is part of our plan definitely we are going to flourish but if we make it the entire plan we may not may or may not succeed so what do we need to do to embrace this disruptive innovation this, this is one question we need to answer when we are moving towards the end of the session so build your competencies when we talk about competencies what are those competencies so first thing first you need to be very good in your domain knowledge you remember few minutes back we were talking about whether it is agriculture or manufacturing or financial services health services or social media and all that those are the domains so that is where one domain knowledge is at the center you need to be very good in stats and mathematics so this is the starting point if you are not good in stats you may or may not succeed you may or may not become a very good ai engineer so start working on statistics definitely yes your your program is computer science engineering so you will be learning computer science fundamentals there 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 are four five core computer science subjects one is operating system then it is networks databases language any programming language data structures and algorithms so that is how those fundamental subjects you need to pay more focus on third building block machine learning A lot of algorithms are there A lot of tools are there so in this particular sequence the third block you need to master is machine learning and fourth is ai basics like natural language processing neural networks knowledge engineering knowledge engineering is the starting point of knowledge representation we talked about knowledge representation in the beginning so that is how that is how you need to build your competencies and when you build your competencies it is very very important for us to integrate those four blocks as far as ai skill set is concerned a lot of things are available on internet a lot of freeware is available content is available in abundance but only thing we need to see that which content is good for us and how to integrate it in our learning path so we need to embrace ai before it is too late because in near future 50% of all jobs currently done by humans could be done by machine this is one very absurd weird statement by 2022 23 lot of jobs ai will create then it eliminated i would request you to just explore the third bullet china has already started strategizing ai into their global leadership and they are doing lot of things all together and they they have substantially said that yes we are going to be ai superpower by 2030 
so a big challenge for all all of us as indians to make sure that we have that particular skill set available where we need to be focused on making india as superpower so 68% of all indian firms will deploy ai solution by 2025 in some other other way that is how that is how things will move in totality so let me revisit those three critical categories narrow intelligence general intelligence super intelligence currently we are we are surrounded by narrow intelligence dedicated to assist with or take over specific tasks specific tasks presently it is happening another 20 years from now we may move into general intelligence taking knowledge from one domain area and transferring it to the other domain that is what we talked about that yes i do have one machine program which can help me run chess game can that particular same algorithm be used to play cricket online this is where general intelligence will come into picture another 10 to 20 years and then next it will be super ai machines that are an order of magnitude smarter than human beings so very very important for us to understand this particular thing so very very challenging time for you as far as your professional career is concerned so let let me say another another 30 to 40 years in the professional life it it will be very very important for us to make sure that we reach at the stage where we are designing general intelligence or super intelligence all together so that is how we are going to move around a very very good information is depicted in this picture i i would request you to just understand from left to right how things are moving looking forward to add more ai lives in our life now let me open the dais for questions okay so few questions are there in the chat box give me few minutes a couple of minutes to just browse through that you can you can start pouring your questions in the chat window so one question is from dev can calculator be example of ai that that is one very initial example of narrow ai because it, it is helping us out to do a very specific task next question comes what is this natural language in which we will convey to the machine what mail we want to send is it like the normal speech we use or the computational language it is a normal speech just just like you talk with alexa right okay google something like that right so it is a natural language what we are talking about and machine is understanding that okay yes uh, the example you are giving samsung fridges they are they are iot enabled lot of things are happening online you can control various things you can order online your your refrigerator will take care of those things and all that okay next question what about sofia rubu sahil is asking yes so that that is one beginning of moving from narrow to general intelligence that there is a beginning not not the final one yes i i would i would request you to just uh, go through the case study of sofia robo and you will understand that they they have designed it beautifully
Okay, next question comes, although we know AI is for humans, uh, it is uh, taking up the jobs of people, what should uh, we do to stay in the ecosystem while working with AI? Simple answer to your question, just ensure your reskilling on a regular basis. Keep yourself updated. So th this, this is the answer to your question. What type of mathematics is required for AI? To start with, it is statistics and probability. There will be a lot of employment. Unemployment, answer is big no. We, we saw the example of uh, a person uh, holding the uh, video camera in a helicopter was replaced by drone. So somebody has designed drone, somebody is flying drone, and somebody is managing drone. So jobs are changed. There's no unemployment. Only thing is whomsoever is reskilling or realigning very quickly will stay relevant. Otherwise, you will be unemployed. How do we start with AI? Yes, we talked about this example. My, my simple answer to this question will be make sure that you are very good in statistics and probability. Make sure that you are very comfortable handling the core computer science basic subjects. Then slowly move into machine learning and deep learning. That is how, that is how you need to go about. And, and in coming days, coming weeks, coming months, coming semesters, we are going to touch upon those things in your classes also. So you need not worry about it. We are going to provide you a lot of opportunities where you will start learning those things. Is IoT also connected with AI? Answer is yes, that, that's what we talked about. If uh, robo is a machine, AI is the brain. So IoT is a machine, is a robo or, or equipment with AI as the brain of it. In what ways AI will generate jobs? Can we have an example or two? Definitely, yes. Uh, we took one example of drone management. Similarly, similarly, when we talk about managing agriculture, the complete agriculture farming is automated. You do have drones available. You do have automated systems available. You do have each and every concept available on cloud where you are sitting somewhere and managing your farm. So this is another example. Third example is you are, you are seeing at this moment of time when, whenever you open Amazon.in or Flipkart, there are a lot of information being fed to you, like recommended for you, or people who purchase this and all that also purchase this. These are the combos available, ratings and all that. Those are things coming from very, very elaborated data analytics happening at the back end. But this is this is not artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is when a lot of things happen in parallel and machine tells you that, yes, now you do this. When machine starts giving you instructions, that, that is where you are moving from machine learning to artificial intelligence. Okay, so what type of mathematics? This is what we have answered because uh, as we know, population will never stop increasing, yes. How to uh, integrate AI with blockchain? Very, very good uh, question. Uh, I, I think this, this is one future research area because blockchain is evolving over the last few years and artificial intelligence is already there. So when you will integrate these two blocks, it, it is primarily a very, very deadly combination and few POCs are already in place. I'll share the details. And when we learn AI practically in course, definitely yes, in coming semesters, you will be thrown a lot of options uh, in the form of workshops, in the form of hackathons, where you are going to learn AI in practical. Also, supercomputer work differently uh, from AI. Answer is uh, supercomputer uh, is a machine and whatsoever algorithm you are running to make use of those supercomputers is artificial intelligence. So that, that is how the differentiation is all about. How can we say AI and Metaware together? 
these both are our future uh, very very open question shiv uh, it, it it is not not the case to compare those two things because when we talk about metaverse metaverse uh, it is it is primarily ar vr it it is it is taking you in a, a virtual world altogether where you are doing lot of things just just like uh, cryptocurrency which which is a virtual currency altogether you don't have anything in hand but yes you are you are transacting you are you are doing business and you are making use of opportunities that is how these two things are integrated all together which projects do we see related to ai in the coming future are the most important ones uh, to work on i i have talked about few uh, use cases during last uh, 40 45 minutes uh where we talked about uh, uh, agriculture we talked about healthcare we talked about financials we talked about manufacturing so these are few fields you can choose based upon your requirement interest area and jump into it because ultimately once you understand the domain how manufacturing works or how agriculture works what are the requirements and then and only then you you can you can give ai solutions to these fields what is statistics analysis specific to ai because that, that, that is a base of it whenever you are talking about uh, designing uh, ai algorithms they are based on statistics so it, it is very very important for us to understand those uh, uh, nitty gritties what should be our focus as first year as we want to become ai engineer and how is india's condition in field of ai very very good question uh, when when uh, as we are into second uh, going going into second semester so my suggestion to you will be uh, you should be very very comfortable in one programming language preferably python preferably because lot of open source ai tools are being designed devised using python number 1 number 2 you are you are learning the core computer science subjects in your curriculum so that that aspect will be taken care of third thing when when it talks about when it uh, comes to statistics definitely statistics will be taught in your curriculum but implementation of statistics in python will be one area you need to work on will provide you opportunities where you will amalgamate these two fields all together when whatsoever you learn in your statistics will be implementing in python because when you do these things you will be more than comfortable designing a given ai algorithm and that will be the starting point of your professional journey in the field of artificial intelligence there could be mistakes next question there could be mistakes in ai code ultimately humans are writing so how machines will do work uh, perfectly there is no surety answer is yes there is no surety this, this is a open question altogether and uh, definitely yes i i talked about uh, one scenario few days back when tesla cars were hacked so in that particular scenario what happens that uh, uh, it it is it is uh, uh, very very critical for us to um, uh, implement those things uh, towards the betterment of the society and if we do that answer will be in our favor why we need ai to do these things that we can do by ourselves yes uh, like at this moment of time just uh, recall the Uh, purpose of uh, we meeting virtually because all of a sudden covid comes and because of covid we are supposed to we are supposed to uh, stop our campuses because of natural calamity and pandemic in that particular scenario what happens that we need to devise a technology where we both can talk with each other listen to each other and see each other virtually that is where the need of technology will come into picture right so answer to your question is yes if you can do something let me let me put a question across to you i i give you 1 terabyte of data and ask you to analyze this you will say that okay i will need sweet 100 days to 200 days to 300 days to analyze that data myself but give it to machine 
super computer one terabyte analysis is done in few minutes that that is where we need computers at our disposal to do things very quickly for us for human beings what's the most popular programming language used in ai i talked about this i i, I would suggest python uh, but uh, java is also there c++ is also there a lot of lot of other options are also there but yes the community is the ai community is using python in a big way what we have to learn in machine learning to develop ai algorithms one is supervised learning supervised machine learning unsupervised machine learning and all that so those machine learning algorithms you need to learn road map of ai we talked about this uh, how we attach our com uh, computational codes and ai creation with the mechanical machinery with respect to robots robotics uh, answer is big yes uh, uh, when when we talk about uh, uh, a robotic arm altogether let us say uh, you see in the manufacturing unit that you are you are assembling uh, let us say maruti cars and robots are coming assembling various parts into that and then you are you are doing that particular thing so that is how that is how things will move in the right direction as far as your computational codes are concerned because you need to create those codes to make that particular robotic arm work according to your requirement so let let me uh, skip those question which i have already answered what are the different professions in ai so to start with you need to be an ai engineer in the first instance how supercomputer works ho gaya what are the different professions ho gaya i think english should be our part of academics answer is yes english is already part of your academics uh, various courses will be there and do we uh, need to be a genius to start learning to start learning ai answer is no you just need to follow the basics basics means good in statistics good in computer basics and machine learning algorithms that's it nothing more than that okay okay uh, you said that about ai controlling the human but it is next to impossible even if it is asi then uh, also as even if the intelligence is next to god we are the one put memory in system so will never put that emotion system and anything about ruling humans that the trying to develop people life with emotion answer is big yes i am with you but yes uh, things are moving uh, in the direction where uh, machines are becoming part and parcel of our life but yes i i'll read it read my statement that yes ai is a part of your plan not the whole part of your plan so you are the boss as human beings you are the boss as far as coders are concerned as far as system designers are concerned and when when we when it comes to uh, implementing ai definitely yes humans rule okay okay so i i have answered lot of questions uh, in case uh, any other question is uh, still pending uh, i would request you to just email me i will be more than happy to answer that particular question and uh, help you out in understanding the topic it was a nice interaction today uh, this particular session i i wanted to uh, conduct uh, just to touch upon the topic from a 30000 feet height now the task for you will be to drill down to 10000 feet height then to 1000 feet height then to 100 feet height so that will be the learning process as far as your technology advancement is concerned so i i have given you a broad overlook broad perspective broad overview so that you understand what is in store for you if you want to explore this particular technology i hope it is making sense so whatsoever questions are remaining i would be more than happy to answer over email or 
somewhere we'll will uh, uh, come to another uh, zoom session and discuss those things so let me close the session uh, one thing one thing particularly uh, you will get one quiz link quiz link in next few minutes it will have only 10 questions 10 multiple choice questions whatsoever we have discussed during today's session and i would request you to just answer those things it it, it is not a case that uh, you will be evaluated on that that is a general knowledge session altogether and it will help you to build up your knowledge in the field thank you thanks a lot